Hi there, this is Love Jover. Thank you so much for tuning to into this channel and thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed already. So, very important video where we will be discussing about all the brain questions asked in the ITGC related interview. Somebody asked me recently in my YouTube channel to create an interview relating to ITGC. So, here it will be a very good refresher video for all of you out there who are going for ITGC interviews as well as for all of you out there who are trying to understand ITGC and for freshers who are actually going to interview for ITGC for the first time, again, it will be very useful. So thank you so much for watching. Please watch carefully. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Thank you. So what are ITGCs? First of all, let us understand what are ITGCs all about. So these are IT general controls, which are basically the foundations for any, uh, you know, organization where you have uh, to make sure that you are making sure the confidentiality, integrity and availability of the organizational assets, which has, which is nothing but the organizational intellectual property, their data, their systems and infrastructure. Okay. So this is IT general controls. It's also called as general IT controls. So, okay, so GITC is also the same thing. So why are ITGCs is important? Uh, you know, as I've already mentioned, you have to make sure that you have proper uh, controls in place for making sure the confidentiality, integrity and availability of information, because otherwise you will not have the reliability of data and you will not be able to safeguard the assets. So in order to ensure compliance with the regulations and mitigating the risks associated with your IT operations, you need to have these ITGC controls in place. So now understanding what are the main categories of ITGCs. So the main categories of ITGCs include access controls, change management controls, backup and recovery controls, security management controls, and segregation of duties control. Okay. Now explaining the concept of segregation of duties and why it is important. So segregation of duties, basically, as the name suggests, you are separating the uh, important and critical responsibilities between different individuals and teams. OK, these are for critical tasks so that you try to prevent a single person from having complete control over a critical process. That's where I started from. OK in order to make sure there is no fraud in your financial systems in order to make sure that there are no errors in your financial systems and in order to control any misuse of resources you keep this control of segregation of duties very important you must have heard about a concept of maker checker which is uh, very commonly used these days in the financial terms especially if you have used erp systems so separation of duties also comes there as well okay so what is the purpose of access controls? Access controls is basically to ensure that your data is confidential. So confidentiality comes as we speak about access controls. So whenever you uh, get any interview question about access controls, always think about confidentiality. OK, so access controls ensure that only authorized individuals have access to the sensitive information and systems, thereby reducing the risk of unauthorized access data breaches and insider threats. That's why access controls are important. After that, you have to describe the process of implementing change management controls. So change management controls involve documenting, reviewing, approving and implementing changing to the IT system, the infrastructure to minimize disruptions, maintaining system integrity and ensure compliance with policies and regulations. So why is change management important? Okay, here we have implemented the change management, but why it is important? Okay, so you need to make sure that the changes are properly reviewed by the change approval board. Okay, so because if you will not review the changes, if you will not follow a proper process for change management, there would be disruptions. Okay, there would be uncontrolled environment. Okay, for the infrastructure. And there would be many disruptions where people would not be able to work if the changes are not controlled properly. Okay, so change control is very important. So make sure that you have in place. 
and after that it says how do you ensure the effectiveness of backup and recovery controls so effective backup and recovery controls involve regularly backing up of data testing backup systems and implementing procedures for restoring the data in the event of a system failure disaster or cyber attack so it's basically asking how do you ensure the effectiveness of backup and recovery controls okay so effectiveness word is very important try to understand only one way to make sure uh, you have proper effectiveness of backup and recovery controls is to make sure that you try to restore the data you do a test restore you do a dry run and you do a drill of system restoration you create a disaster recovery scenario in your organization and you produce an environment where you need to restore all the backup data which is already backed up okay if you are able to restore the backed up data then effectiveness of backup and recovery controls is proved okay but if you are not able to restore the backup data by any chance then the effectiveness is not proved okay so i hope it makes sense so what are the com some common challenges in implementing idgcs so some common challenges include resistant to change because again these are policies and procedures not easy to make sure that every employee in the organization would first of all understand and secondly comply with them all the time so yes uh, it, there might be resistance to change if there is any new changes in the processes change management where people to have to, to wait for approvals there could be many scenarios okay resource constraints sometimes the organizations do not have a lot of resources so implementation might not be proper okay and if uh, implementation is not proper then of course there would be an issue overall issue in itgc controls lack of management support sometimes management does not understand the criticality of having itgc controls in place okay so all this is very important in order to make sure that we understand the common challenges in implementing itgcs how do you assess effectiveness of itgcs okay so this is important assessing the effectiveness includes first of all conducting regular audits these could be internal audits or external audits okay depending upon your requirements second thing would be risk assessment you perform a risk assessment in your organization and by performing risk assessment you understand what are the areas where the itgc is working fine and what are the areas where itgc needs improvement so that's how risk assessment will help you and i have produced many videos on risk assessment on this channel you can watch them if you need any support okay and compliance reviews so these are some steps to ensure effectiveness of itgcs in your organization as well as monitoring key performance indicators and incident response metrics so again this is very important when you are trying to assess the effectiveness because if there are a lot of incidents happening in your organization that means the controls are not working properly and if your key performance indicators are showing a very high number or a very low number that is also a you know point of concern so you have to make sure that you analyze all these parameters in order to judge the effectiveness of itgcs so explaining the concept of least privilege and its significance in access controls so least privilege as the name suggests only says that the individual should be granted minimum level of access for example if a fresher joins an organization he should not be given the entire access of the department on the first day itself he should be given only the access which is relevant to his particular job role only okay and not the entire department's uh, generalized job groups where everybody has the same level of access same level of permissions same level of rights that should not happen okay so make sure you follow this least privilege principle and uh, it basically helps to make sure that uh, you do not have uh, Uh, any sort of security issues and it also helps you to mitigate any unauthorized access situations okay if you have proper least privilege in place how do you ensure compliance with regulatory requirements related to itgcs so compliance with regulatory requirements involves understanding relevant laws and standards which are applicable to the organization and accordingly implementing the controls and procedures which are applicable again conducting regular assessments to make sure that whatever has been identified is being followed religiously or not 
and of course maintaining the documentation as a reference point as a documentation uh, as an evidence to demonstrate compliance okay what role does it governance play in ensuring effective itgcs it governance is basically making sure you have all the relevant processes policies in place structure you know to make sure that you align all the it investments in information security with the business objectives and you manage all the risks businesses effectively and you have to make sure that this is done properly okay so it governance is very important otherwise you won't be able to have an effective uh, itgc in place okay because you would not have defined roles and responsibilities and accountability would be missing if you do not have it governance in place okay how do you handle security incidents related to itgc handling security incidents involve detecting and containing the incident conducting a root cause analysis implementing activities providing communication with stakeholders so this is how a general it incident would handle okay because itgc also talks about confidentiality integrity and availability of information so you can use this method okay and uh, again if you want any further information on how to handle security incidents related to itgc uh, there are videos on this channel which you can refer to okay what steps would you take to improve itgc in the organization okay so very important this question improving the existing itgc in an organization okay so in order to do that first of all you have to understand what is already in place in the organization so we would actually do a comprehensive assessment of all the existing controls which are in place and are there any gaps are the controls operating effectively or not so you would try to identify the areas of improvement and developing and implementing the action plans how do you plan to improve the areas of improvement and how would you implement the new controls what is the action plan and etc and monitor progress throughout the regular reviews and audits explain the concept of role based access controls and its advantages so role based access control is uh, simple okay you provide the access based upon the role that a particular individual in the organization has been assigned so that's why role based access control basically reduces unauthorized access and again helps in ensuring confidentiality okay how do you ensure that employees are aware of itgc policies and procedures so you have to make sure you have you conduct proper awareness sessions you have proper trainings and communications on uh, newsletters on itgc policies and procedures monthly bi monthly or quarterly whatever you want to add in the organization and security awareness trainings should be a part of the onboarding process itself where people understand the relevance and importance of itgc in the organization and of course uh, for previous employees who have not uh, been able to conduct these trainings or who were, who were not a part of this uh, course make sure you have refresher training sessions as well okay after that we have what measures can be taken to prevent insider threats related to itgcs so insider threats are related to inside of the organization we have already discussed many controls which are related to that first of all is access control okay uh, where you you actually make sure that you have proper confidentiality in place only authorized users are allowed access to certain information secondly is by monitoring the user activities if you do not have any way of monitoring the user activities you can never prevent insider threats because you would never be able to understand or come across the sort of issues or incidents that are being uh, raised if you do not monitor the user activities uh, first of all okay conducting background checks you have to make sure that you for any employee that you hire in the organization there is a proper uh, background check mechanism so in order to make sure that you know you stay compliant with itgc and after that you have to enforce the principle of least privilege which we have already discussed 2 minutes ago and promoting a culture of security awareness and accountability in an organization how do you stay updated on emerging trends and best practices in itgc 
staying updated involves participating in industry conferences, seminars, networking with peers, subscribing to relevant publications, publications and newsletters, and pursuing professional certifications and training programs. There are many ways to stay updated. Even my channel produces a lot of content. If you watch this content, you will, of course, stay updated on any uh, new thing on IDGC. I'll be helping you with that. And if any specific help you want, uh, feel free to add in the comment section. After that, what are the key components of an effective ITGC framework? So key components, as I've already mentioned, you should have policies and procedures, proper risk assessments, proper existing control testing, monitoring mechanisms, reporting mechanisms, incident response mechanisms, regular reviews, and regular audits in place, okay, in order to have an effective ITGC framework in place. Can you provide an example of a successful implementation of ITGC in a previous role? This would be a very common question, okay, that people with experience might be asked, okay. So here you need to provide a specific example from your past experience. This is for experienced people only, where you were involved in implementing or improving the ITGC in your previous organization, highlighting what all challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? What were the strategies that you employed along with the outcomes that you achieved? Okay. How you were able to improve the security? Okay. How would, were, were you able to measure the improvement? Were there any... KPIs that you use to measure, okay, or was it related to any sort of operational efficiency that the business achieved, or was it a part of the compliance effort for the business, okay? So this is how you can answer. Uh, I think this video has been useful. Uh, we have discussed a lot of things. Still, if anybody has any questions, uh, as always, feel free to ask in the comment section. I hope this has been useful. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.